um, Brother Frank, whom I, I mean, I call him Brother Frank, but Dr. Frank Igbomalu, whom I will be reading out his biography and then handing over to him now, you know, is somebody that I know, is somebody that I've watched, is somebody that I've been blessed to have worked with in the last five to six years, and is somebody that I can really vouch for the fact that he understands the African terrain. You know, not only is he in the marketplace, he's also a believer. And I have asked him, I said, look, the people that are logging here are audience that want a practical response. So I'm trusting God that he will be as practical as it gets for you about the topic monetizing your skills and your education in the African content. I will moderate questions. So when you have questions during the period of his talking, please begin to send out your question. I'll keep a track on those questions so that I can ask them. So without wasting much time, um, over to you, Brother Frank, or Dr. Frank. <laughs> I'll get used to this doctor thing, but you know, over to you, Dr. Frank. Hi, uh, I don't mind answering Frank. Uh, <laughs> if I couldn't convert the the doctor to if I couldn't monetize the doctor, then Frank is still fine. <laughs> okay. Um, thanks for this opportunity. I really welcome everybody here. Um, without wasting much of the time, um, um, let me just give a, a brief introduction of myself. Like the uh, pastor just mentioned, um, Dr. Frank uh, Ibamaru. Um, I have my Theoretical undergraduate in theoretical engineering. I have my first master's in uh, information, um, in telecommunication from Malaysia. I have my um, second master's in now uh, um, IT, information technology from University of Cape Town. Um, I have my PhD uh, from uh, in telecommunication from University of Johannesburg. I'm currently doing my postdoc in University of Johannesburg. I'm also a part time lecturer. The University of Johannesburg. Currently, I'm the CEO of Osmotic Engineering Group. Osmotic Engineering Group who basically major on the IT through telecommunication, which I'm also the director. We also have water uh, unit, and uh, we also have energy unit. We base in South Africa. We have branch in Nigeria. We have a footprint in Uganda, Botswana, and um, uh, Zambia currently. Um, let me stop there. Actually, um, as we go, Osmotic Engineering is not only company. I have uh, three companies um, that are open last year, and all of them are working um, perfectly. I'm also the CEO of all those three companies, managing all of them together. I don't know, but don't ask me how I manage it. I don't, I don't know, but I was able to manage all. So let's dive on to what we have today. I will first of all start, I like telling stories. I'm a storyteller, so I will start with a small story to able to link up with um, all we, uh, the topic, monetizing your skills and education in the midst of job scarcity. Okay, I grew up in the north, um, eastern part of Nigeria. At the age of 12, my, we have like a family store. So we have one, uh, they call it um, uh, main market. There is like, uh, they said it's the biggest market in the upper Africa. I don't know where they get that, I've never researched, but we believe when we're growing up that this is the biggest market. So we have a store there. I started going there at the age of 12. So even by that age of 12, my mother he used to give me key. Like I normally go to school from Monday to Friday, but on Saturday I have to be in the shop, in the store. So. When I ever I go to the store, there's some certain things she keep on, you know, letting me know about the store and the strategies. Like she keep on telling me in the uh, because I will not be in the the store throughout, but on Saturday whenever I pick the key, she will expect me to go to the store. So she's selling uh, fabrics, lace, you know, those fabrics and all that. But she will say she will allow me to go there on my own and then, you know, sample it. And she expecting me to sample it in a particular way or a particular manner. And when I'm sampling it, she 
she normally comes, like she, I will go around eight to open the store, but she comes around 10, 11, and she'll be the, from very far. I started looking at the way I sample it. So the first correction, immediately she arrived at the store, she said, no, why do we put these two color the same? This is a dark color, this is a dark color, it's supposed to put white in between, a shouting color in between to make it look attractive. You know, so I keep on doing that until around the age of 14, she can able to see that I was able to handle it. So there's also some things she's also mentioned. She will come in the store and look at me, why are you sitting down? She said, look at it, we have over 20 stores here and they are all selling the same thing. Why can you convince, how will you convince a client, a customer that your own is the best if you are sitting down without smiling? So I always stand up and uh, at the age of 12, 13, I'll be smiling at everybody that passed away because that is their, they said everybody a potential customer. So you need to attract them. And for you to attract them, you need to smile. So I'll just be smiling because I know the times you normally come, I'll stand up and start smiling to everybody and all that. So there's another thing again she taught me. She taught me about, I will not eat in the store. I will not eat with the money that is in the drawer that she, the sale she made yesterday until I make a sale. So if I didn't make any sale, I will not eat. So that's I've been determined. I will have to make sure that I make a sale before 10 o'clock. If not, I will be hungry till 12 for one, you know. So I know that. So in all this thing about our store, so she keep on telling me how you market your store, how you market the goods, the product, in the store determine how much you're going to sell it. So it does not matter, uh, you know, he said, we have 20 stores. All of them have the same goods, but the prices are different. The prices depend on how you market it, how you sample it. If you sample it well, and you made a customer believe that other people are selling <laughs> inferior materials. You are the one, only one selling original. But that depends on how you market it. And I saw this moving years and it's working. Sometimes when you said, see, this is the large price. If you get in another place, you cannot get it below the price. We are the best because of the way we sample it. And you see the customer move to the next shop and price and they give her a lower price. You still come back to take in that high price we are selling. So in all these things, there's something I want us to take up from the story now. I understand the business what we call business, whatever we are doing in life, is all about business, is about buying and selling. Then the question now will be, what are you selling? Because everybody have what they are selling. Everybody that want to buy a product have what they are want to buy. It's not about the product, what we are selling. Samsung is only selling Samsung. Nokia, they're selling Nokia. Apple are selling Apple. Everybody in the world is selling. But the issue is, what are you selling? So in this, what we have for what we have today is either you are selling your skills or you are selling your education. And the product, every product we are selling is peculiar to you. You don't sell other people's product. You sell your product and how you market it. Now, that drives me on our topic now. Because like Pastor just mentioned now, we all have skills. We also have education background. Then the question now, how do we monetize it? I will start first of all to say, first, I want you to write some, something. What is your value? If somebody will stop you and say, what is your hourly rate? Because if you don't know your hourly rate, you don't know the value of the product you have. At this point, you're supposed to know my hourly rate is this. And if you don't know your hourly rate, I will try to explain in that hourly rate a bit so that you can, first of all, to get what you want. So that if you're wasting, if you're sitting one hour, I don't know, that somebody was joking, he was telling me, you know, which club is it? That's not, is it? I told him, I'm, 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 I don't know, but it's not I'm, I'm about the people watching football, but I can stay one hour, 30 minutes just to watch <laughs> as now. Because that one hour means a lot to me. That one hour I sit down there is my hourly rate is going. And that hour matters a lot. 
Did I have a social life? Yes. Did I follow up with everybody? Yes. I watch highlight. Highlight is just 20 seconds. So I watch who scored the goal. Okay, this person. Is that so? That is what you want to know. Which people win? Which who score goals? For me. So the hour, if you, the, the moment you know your hourly rate, let me, I will, I will explain those hourly rate now so you can get it well. And I'm going to explain it not based on my idea. I'm going to explain it based on Engineering Council of South Africa, what they provide for hourly rate. Uh, sorry, I'm an engineer. I will talk more on engineer, but they're almost the same thing across the bar. Now, for our village, I also look at it also people that have skills. I'm trying to also look at it and see. Then for your hourly rate, for a fresh graduate that just graduated from varsity without zero experience, is between 150, so 200 rand. Rand is about 15. Um, uh, uh, one rand is about uh, 15. Um, uh, so one dollar is about 15 rands as of today. So you can do the multiplication. So it's 15, 150 to 250 rands, a fresh graduate. So, because the issue that more, if you don't know your hour rate and calculate what you're supposed to be paid, you'll be underpaid. If you don't know your hour rate and go for interview, they ask you how much you want us to pay you. You, you know, you allow people to define your hour rate. And if you allow, an employee or anybody that you're working for to define your hour rate, you, you want to pay you. And you don't even know. So the hourly rate for a graduate, first graduate, is between 150 and 200, 250. So we are talking about per hour. And then that hourly rate, which is 250, if you take it by eight hours in a day, you are sitting down on 2,000 rands per day. If you take it by five, it's about 10,000 by four. So it's about 40,000 normal hourly rate. So it's between 30,000 and 40,000 for a fresh graduate. Then if you finish your master's, no experience. So it's between the 250 to 400. It depends. If you have your PhD, you know, and without any job experience, or you didn't register any professional body, is between 600 and 1,000 per hour. So when you calculate it, you know your worth first, because what we boast your confidence is first of all, knowing your rate. Because when you know it, then we started talking about how do we get this money then? Now, I want you to, to take us back, just write it and say, this is my hourly rate. Look at, I've, I've defined categories. Then from the people that uh, have skills, no matter, depending on the skills, it, it, it's ranging from 50 rand, 50 rand to 150 to 200, depending on how you market it. I said, my mother said, when we're sampling, the way you sample will determine how much. You know, when I'm giving range so that we know this is the range, but the way you, you market yourself, the way you sampling yourself will determine how much you'll be paid. That's why I was a manager in my last, um, before I opened my company, my last job, I keep on getting people complaining, you know, because I'm a black guy and this one is a white color, they're paying different and we are, we are all in the same position. I said, yes, you're in the same position, but you didn't bargain well. You are going to get the job, you carried away. You say, pay me anything and they paid you anything and you're complaining. So when I check the list and the files when they employed, you know, I started checking and find that this is what you accepted. But the white guy or the colored guy or the other person didn't accept it. And they know, they know he packaged himself, he walked himself, he talked on himself, you know, in the interview, he was able to beat this and they paid him the hourly rate. That is disaster. Now, in this old world, what I mentioned 20 years ago when I was going to the store with my mother, what I want to drive there is that. I want to explain to you, we have old world. I call it old world and the new world. The old world are people in the 90s. <laughs> in the 90s, what happened in the 90s when they have a, a physical store that you're, you're seeing. The old world is when you, you know, we have to smile to every customer looking at you, they're looking at you because you have to smile for you to, to, to sell. But every, all of them are the same thing. Now, I said that you're eating it. Now, what I mean by store in the old world now, what we, what we, our old world now is social media, store, social media. Then we have um, customer, the way my mother is 
introducing me to the customers, I smile to the customer. In the new world, what we have is network. Your network, people in your network on that social media. Then we have a product on the old world, the product you're selling. But in this new world, what happened now is your skills, your degree, your uh, education. That's what is present. Then the, the marketing strategies is still the same. But the only thing we have is we have um, analog marketing. And now we have a digital market in the new world. So if you are still in the new world, it will be difficult for all these things, even when I mentioned about the hourly rate, you can't get it because there's a lot of things. It will have a lot of barriers, a lot of, you know, so you need to move to the new world. And that is when I want to focus more on how we can able to move on the new world. Because knowing, combating that money is one thing, you know, <laughs> you know, monetizing your scale is one thing. Getting the money, being paid to you, is, that, is a different board game. Knowing your hourly rate is a different thing. Because it's not about knowing the hourly rate you have used, but getting it to your bank account is another bargain. You know, then I looking at it is a uh, um, uh, sales. Is uh, you know when you are the sales we will make normally we make sales. Then the hourly rate how you cash out the money, and that's what I want us to focus on. On now we have known our hourly rate. You know where you belong from the explanation. People that have degree, if you even don't have degree. The number of experience also count. You know, so if we know it, then the issue now, how? Where do we get this? How do I get my client? Where are they? You know, how do I convert this thing? You know, because we have been saying all these things. How do I get this money we are talking about? I know my hourly rate is 1,000. And I'm sitting at home from morning to night a day. I'm losing 8,000 rands. So if of a true, I'm losing, how do I get that 8,000 rands? That's what I want to measure more to discuss on it and how to get it, not only to monetize the skills and this and how you can get it into your account. There's something that uh, Pastor John mentioned about it. Look, if you're talking about scarcity of job, we have not started, more of it is coming, it's coming. We are talking about fourth industrial revolution. We are talking about smart city. Robots will take up those, these jobs. You are seeing, it's coming very fast, more than you think. In fact, COVID-19 helped it because we, it will have been projected that it will happen from 2030, you know. But the way it happened now, everything has gone digital. It will happen as soon as possible before the 2025. If you didn't do anything, a lot of people would just be sitting at home without doing anything. So because robots are coming to take over these jobs. That is what, what, what is the industrial revolution. And Africa, you know, unlike before, Africa is championing it. There's a lot of, if you, want, if you want to get a job, just add, attach anything you're doing, attach application of fourth industrial revolution to it. It will go. <laughs> Atta just attach, no matter the research, research you're doing, just put it application of artificial intelligence on it. It will sell, put every, everyone, everyone to hear what is artificial intelligence, everyone to know. And then the more we expose yourself or we're exposing to artificial intelligence, you know, how to do it, the more we're losing the job. But now, we want to know how, what we are going to do since robot is coming, job, more job will be lost and all that is coming. So it's not, it will, even if you pray for now, it's going to come in. That is the new world we are in. So now the first question I said, you will ask, or we will start looking at is how does your skills collide with what is in the market? You know, how does this your skill now collide with what is the market? So in this new market world, it's not about, we don't need, like in the, in the old world, what we have is we have like a teacher. Every school needs teachers. You know, you can't do that. Then you just go there and apply, they give you a job. I know that, you know, if you're a teacher, you go to get a job. In if you're an engineer, just see engineering world, you can apply there, they give you a job in engineering because you're an engineer. But in this new world, it's not always like that. You have to diverse, you have to oh. change. If your skills that you have, if your education that you have is not giving you the drive you need in the market. Mm -hmm. Most of us, you know, they push us to do maybe the course you do. But after doing that course, it's not what you like doing. Because what will take you to the market, what will market is something that you love. You can do that without even paying, without anybody paying you, you can do it. You can, you know, something that you do good. 
you go to you know uh, LinkedIn, you go to Facebook, you go to social media, you keep on discussing about it. Let people know you for that. It's a different word. It's the word that people catch money every day on YouTube. It's the word that people catch money in Instagram. People, you know, blogging about the food they cook in the house, they post it online, and they start getting the attraction. It's a word that even common football, like you know, is a different word altogether. So it's not true. You must be true. You know, academic must be true. Engineer, but no, you have to check if what you obtain degree is not favorable. You change on what you like. You will be able to like to discuss. Like I keep on saying, I'm not really a motivation speaker. I'm discussing what I'm doing. I'm discussing what I'll practice. And discussing what is I'm cashing money every day with, with you. So the first question, you know, that said, imagine it with your skills. Look at the market. What is the need of the market? And supply the problem, the solution to the need of market, and so they're cashing out money. That's all. Then the second one I said I mentioned is the number two. Number one is how do you market? The second one, how can I get paid when I offered my skill? How can I get paid? First of all, you know, you need to find someone who is willing to pay what you have. You need to look for people that need it. Because they, they, they are, I will still go there. That will be the last thing I'm going to discuss on how to get people on that love what we are doing. I will still get to that. So in this new world, things changes. Every business needs their presence their presence online they need to we need to do website uh, web, uh, website developer website design social media marketing and all that and all that you know, through a lot of this to post on there which are instagram linkedin twitter and facebook and, and we own it as the market and you need to go there and then then the second one again the what we need to ask yourself where can you apply you know looking at where you can apply your skills the truth about it is every company has problem. Every company in this world has problem, all of them. So now, if you have a master's, if you have a PhD, if you have a degree, look at your thesis. Let me use only that one. Pick up your thesis. Where can you apply this thesis? The application of it to the industry. What industry are you looking at? Every industry wants to reduce costs. Every industry wants to increase their performance. Every industry wants to increase revenue. That's the thing they're doing. You know, I, I want to set up an example. When I finish, I, I did my PhD in the telecommunication and I did some things in IT. So uh, I was, though I was working, I was doing work full time and that, you know, then I, my first job, I don't really know my word. You know, when I let me start from my first job when I arrived in South Africa, I came to South Africa. Not, um, I'm not that old, uh, 2015. And I just came for my PhD. So I was busy with my PhD. But I remember I, my family was still in Nigeria then, and I need to move them over. Um, PhD that I was doing, I, I was on scholarship, but they only give me 6,000 grants every month after paying my decent so the remaining one is um, 6,000 rands in the market. But 6,000 rands will not be enough. I was just managing myself. I started looking for a job. I apply for anything. Because then I don't even know what I want. I would just need my, well, all I need is to get a job. It gets to the point, I started applying for a job of 8,000 rands. I don't even know what I, you know, 8,000 rands, a job of a, somebody that have a diploma degree. A diploma in electrical engineering. Once I see electrical engineering, I'll apply. Because of what? I don't know my word. Then at the end of the I buy newspaper every Sunday, you know, when, whenever I come to, I'm going back home, I put a newspaper, it's going through, apply all the jobs here. But none of them called me. I let I got one. Miraculously, I got one. You know, then there's something that happened during interview when doing negotiation. The, there is a Chinese company, you know, they're very smart their way. They asked me, <laughs> how much do you want us to pay you? 
I now, I now reverse the equation back there. How much do you pay somebody in my position? He said, no, 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 just, I said, no, just tell me how much you pay. He just looked at me and said, and by then I've already obtained my second master's and I've worked for, I've worked, I worked where I was in Malaysia, I worked where I was in Nigeria. So I have over eight years experience as of then. So, but I don't really know the, the market. I don't even know my value. He said, he will pay me 25,000. No, out of curiosity, I said, no, 25,000. Why not make it um, that? He said, okay, no problem. Just within five minutes, we are done. So I was like, ah, it's like this guy, why did he just say 25, uh, 30,000 immediately accepted? But then I, I took up the job. By the, after two years, I got another, after two, three years, sorry, I got another job. By then I know my what. I understand the market, you know. No, even when I was going there, look, I don't even know what they're doing. I don't know, but the only thing I know, I have a confidence I'm, um, I will learn. They mentioned something about in uh, IT, the telecommunication, I said, no, I can do it. It's a senior manager position I applied, you know. Then I moved from 30,000, I think the only increase was 35. I moved from that to 75,000 a month. And during the interview, when they mentioned it, they said, how much, how much, how we pay you? I said, 75. Is there any negotiation? I said, no negotiation. He said, do you mean his last? I said, that is my last. He said, okay, go, we'll give you up from us. I left. After one, one week, they said they have not made a decision. They sent a mail. Please, can we come for this? He said, there's no negotiation. At the end of the day, <laughs> after one month, they sent me an offer letter. I know that. So, Knowing you are what, knowing you what you value, no give you confidence. They apply, they, they interview 20 people. And none of them give, give above 50,000. But yet they say, call me back. So it's not about, it's about you with the confidence, you knowing what you have. Now, what is in there is that they are also okay. In that, in that my job, so I remember one day we get a very big uh, contract with Telcom. You know, immediately I came, they got favored me, we, we submitted application and, uh, and, uh, and we applied. And next uh, we got the, the contract and they called me for this. I went with my manager there and there's something that happened. So we, we went there and the client was, you know, saying we need to do this, we need to do that. The, what is mentioned is much. And my manager was, okay, no, no problem. We have done it before, it's easy. He, he was accepting everything. So he got to a point I was confused. I now asked him, why are you accepting? When we are going, we're like, why are you accepting everything? <laughs> you know, and okay, I was like, okay, maybe there's, um, because an international company, we can consult our Australian counterpart, you know, so that they can help us. He told me you are the only telecom telecommunication person uh, in this company, both in Australia and South Africa. I said, then how, but what, you accepted everything? He said, yes. I said, what? Well, he said, that's why we employed you to solve it. We are consultant. We don't say no. You have to visit and solve it. And I knew nothing about what he was saying. Everything I accepted, I knew nothing about it. He said, during your interview, told us we are running, then I was running up my PhD. He told us we are running on a PhD. I have two masters. What he means that you can crack anything, any problem. It was done on me that with the skills I have, I can crack. Less than two months, I cracked the whole thing. I solved the whole thing. I, you know, the client know me. Even when I left the company, the client still look for me. So what you have, if you have your masters, what it means that you have authority in that field. And that authority you have in that field, you need to research and take that authority in that field. What it means that you can able to penetrate no matter how difficult the problem is you bring a solution to it. And the research does not give you limit. Look, in my company, I just want to cite another example. I still have a lot to go. Sorry, but I needed to, to, to nail this, um, cover this. In my company right now, we have, I have energy unit. Energy, we into solar, hydro, and wind energy. You know, we are purely, purely consulting. We're helping people to take them out of grid, you know, because of this, um, uh, load shedding 
as the whole Africa. It's not only a problem of this. Taking uh, uh, big companies out of grid, uh, grids, you know, to have their own permanent destiny and give them solution using hydro or, or wind or this. Then we also have water. In water, we are looking at the water. Every African child will have portable water, you know, solving, I mean, communicating more with the government, you know, trying to solve a lot of issues within the water sector and also telecommunication. But look, if I take you through the water now, you might think I'm a water engine, water specialist. If I take you through the energy process, you might think I'm the energy process, but I'm the same, my telecom. So whenever you get to a point of you having a master's, one, or you don't even have anything, you don't know anything about energy, you don't know anything about what, read about it, know about it, pick a scale out of it. I've met a lot of people that I met in industry. They are, have a big water company firm, big water company, employed engineers. They don't have an engineering degree. I remember, I've met a lot of people in industry, even in Africa, I've moved around. That's one I've met in Botswana. He does not even have, he said he studied education, but he have about 20 engineers working, working under him. I said, how do we do it? He said, he read. And then when you engage with him, you know that he know. The only thing he don't have is certificate, but he read about it, he studied about it. One of the things they will put in, if you, are, if you are doing your PhD, when you are graduating, what they put in is that Mr. A and B, uh, we are able to certify that he can able to carry independent research. Nobody say you pass. <laughs> so if you're able to carry out independent research on your own, and this is what you're talking about. So in the new world we are today, does not matter the degree that back you up. What matters, what you can discuss, what we can be able to solve. Nobody will ask you a degree when you started talking, once you're making sense. So learn new skills, develop your needs. Learn your new skills, develop and all these skills. If the old skills, the one you have, the one you have degree on, the skills you want to maintain, work on it. What my mother was teaching me, that was referring at the beginning, is that she was teaching me on how to be plus, A plus in whatever I do. Because I remember then, <laughs> she's one that taught me, I should not use calculator. You know, when we are telling you, we want to say, I said, at your age, why are you using calculator? It will make you be dumb, use your brain. Three times five is 15. Multiply it, add nine to it, it become one. So what she was teaching me all about is, you know, to, to make use of, sample well, sell it well, increase the price. So what I'm saying is in this new world that we are today, look for anything if you don't have. I don't have skills. I don't even know what is my skills. Look for something that make you happy. If to analyzing a football is one that makes me happy, discuss about it. Make a scale out of it. Before you know it, they'll start to contact you. People will start calling you on that. And when they call you, you chat. I, I, I think I've mentioned this before. I was discussing with my wife. She always tell me that, you know, you're a business guy. I'm not a business person. I'm not a business man. I said, no, you're a business man. that you don't make money out of your own. I make money out of my own. She know all the online shops in US. There's no online shops in US. She don't, she buy online and she buy very cheap. I remember when she bought a shirt for me for four dollars. Very nice quality shirt. See, this one is this one I was wearing is one of them. For four dollars. I went to the shop to price the shirt here in South Africa. It was almost 800 rand per one, 750, 800 within that range. But she bought it at when they're being sales, 400, uh, four dollars. I said, You would have made you would have be a billionaire, a millionaire with those checks, if you know how to monetize it. But you don't make use of it. So it's not about, look at the skills. It can be anything. Pick it up, refine it. I will still go in detail. I don't know uh, how many times I still have, but I still want to go in detail on how to do all these things. So what, what, let, me, let, me, let me rush a bit in what I have here so that I can able to run down ask question. So it depends. So the five questions you need to get to ask yourself if you want to get paid. If you have a skill, then what the question I want you just five, five, five things I want you to write down now. 
for you to get paid, you know, about getting paid in your skills. If you have a skill, who pays for what sort of thing? Who pays for that sort of things? That skill you have. The question you have, who pays for it? Second one, does a company pay for people to do the, the stuff for that? Does any company look around such? Or is it individual that pays for it, that look for that skills? Is it by company or by individual? The second one, is there a problem that people, the people that have their skill will be able to solve? The skill will have, is there any problem they can solve? Because every skill, every degree, there's a problem. If you are not solving a problem, then it's not a skill. If you are not, if you are a degree, it's not solving any problem, then there's something wrong with that because it's supposed to solve a problem. Is there any market for my skills? Which market, you know? Does anybody pay for that information I have or for the knowledge? So this should be the question we, we, we need to ask. Then the other one is today asking yourself, at this point now, where did I start? First of all, get recession. Get a job, start searching. Find people online and figure out how they are making money. Look for different people profile on LinkedIn. I, I love that LinkedIn too much. <laughs> Look for different people on LinkedIn. I'll see discuss about LinkedIn later if time permits. But find out who is doing what interests you. Because it, it can sit at home, you have to be online. Who doing what interests in you? Then start looking for the people and all. So for you to get to all this. Remember, there's a, something you need to do. There's a personal work in-house you need to do. My, like I said, my mother taught to say, you have to be smiling to this. That is, a, that is her own brand. Uh, brand. You, don't still, you don't come to my mother's shop and see that, my mother's store and see that. It's not possible, you have to stand. Now, you need, I, I move to the next section, which I said, you need to replant yourself. Whether you are, have PhD, you have been years in it, you need to rebrand. Rebrand means a lot. I've assisted how you can rebrand yourself, rebrand your skills, rebrand your uh, 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 certification. Move from the old world to the new world. It's still about rebranding. You need to rebrand yourself to develop a product. Maybe why you are not getting it right that that product is not good enough. You are selling the same product others have. You are selling the same skill at the rate. You don't even know. You don't even know that what you have is a skill. So you need to. There's a, what we call personal branding. You need to do that. If you don't do that, the this the, this new world you, you can't catch up with this new world. The entire world now is online. Almost every job opportunity we are talking about online. You have to take this brand seriously. Work hard. See people when they are online. You know. Then one of the things. Why you will need to rebrand yourself? First, it's about opportunities. Number one, how, why would I rebrand myself? It's because of opportunity. You don't wait for opportunity to come for you to rebrand. You need to rebrand first and wait for opportunity because when you rebrand, it gives you more room for opportunity to open up. But if you are still the same, I don't know what to do. I was angry last uh, month. I went to, to school, uh, I'm doing something. There's a guy I know. He just he finished POG and uh, he applied for postdoc. He couldn't get it. And the next thing I had, I met him, we were talking. He said, No, um, I have Uber now, I'm doing with Uber. I said, What? Uber? With PhD? He said, No, we're making it. I said, It's not about money. I didn't say that Uber is bad, but I said, No, you don't know what we have. If you really know what we have, what we are sitting down with, and it's very good. He did a British PhD, it was doing good. I said, if, if, because you don't know. I said, I was like you before. That's why I applied for a job for 8,000 plus. I said, because you don't know. If you know what you have, you can, do you know what you have? So you need, first of all, rebrand yourself and open up for opportunity. There is a lot of them, massive opportunity. Number two, why you need to rebrand yourself is to get authority, to get authority in your field. Like what the person I said is doing uh, this, if he has authority in his field, he can't be doing that. I remember I did, I did my PhD, my PhD is rated with 5G. During the uh, COVID-19 and era, I saw some people talking about, I say, you want to know, if you want to know how um, educated or how exposed this person, when you talk, when somebody talk about 5G and coronavirus, just know about his, his limit, know where he belongs. 
5G and COVID don't have the, the, nothing, it's like two parallel things that I cannot meet. Oh, well, yes, people are using it as an excuse, you know, because of 5G, that's why I have COVID, uh, COVID and all that. So, you know, once you mention, you know how we block. I think I, I was invited somewhere to discuss about 5G, and I think I did a very good job there on discussing, you know, explaining people what is 5G is all about, what is COVID 19 is all about. There's no related about, you know, because I understand my field. But the first job I did was, um, I did five years something like this. Then I started reading about it. When I get a job in that my former company, the first task is that they are deploying five G in Australia, and I have to lead a team of forty on that process. And the five G I knew was the one I only have. There's a paper I wrote about five G, just a bunch of it, but now it's it's practical. So what I did is I have to go back to my drawing book, go back to my note, go back to my thesis. Read from there, read other books, because now I'm going to the field. So I was able to go to the field and discuss what 5G is all about. And we're able to uh, implement 3,500 sites at Australia, because I'm the one to do the last find and make sure that everything is not, that when they put up a site, what happened to it, make sure the interference is not affecting, you know, the rays that is coming for the 5G is not affecting human beings, the power lines. I have to check everything to uh, then endorse the site and certify it, then before the, the uh, site can go online. But what am I saying that is that, what gave me, one of the things that gave me that job is that through the interview, they want to do 5G implementation and none of them know what the 5G is all about. But when I came for the interview, one of the things they mentioned, I immediately they mentioned 5G. I took over the, I took over the ground. What I know is just the two, they had never did any practical, you know, and it's not my, just a sub topic in what I was doing, but I make the thing look very good and nice to them. If I do interview, I will have an interview of one hour. Only me, I speak for five minutes where I'm explaining 5G and the way it works. So in everything you are doing, when you started talking about taking authority, whatever you do in your thesis, masters, the skills you have, make sure you have authority. Discuss it, say it everywhere. In every environment you find yourself, please discuss about it. Whether they will under, make them to understand. So, sorry, let me be rushing again. The second one I mentioned about opportunity for opportunity to have, make sure you have authority in your field. Read it over and over again to take authority in your field. The second one, so that why you have to rebrand yourself, so you gain confidence. If you didn't convince yourself, look, you cannot convince anybody. One of the ways of gaining confidence, almost right, even if it's one or two lines, and post it, let people discuss. Whenever you see it on social media, whenever you see it on LinkedIn, anybody mention about your topic, your area, make sure you comment. The more you comment and explain, you are building your confidence. You know, you know, I don't want to comment, you know, these people, no, you have to comment. You have to comment because the person that will be answering your question might be a professor from Australia or from maybe US. They're all on LinkedIn looking at what you are commenting. Everybody's reading your comment. And the way you critic, the way you come up, you know, because it's your area, the way you come up and criticize and bring out the best out of it. They say, no, this person, we're looking for you. There's a guy, I love you so much. He finished from Vivit. He did something on solar. He immediately graduated for his PhD. He said that, in fact, I was like, what is wrong with this guy? Every day he's on LinkedIn. Every day he must post something. Before you know it, he started attracting, there's a lot of traffic in his world. Not up to four months, a company called him from Australia. And then during the, when they called him, doing it, he was asked, I said, you have to charge in Australian dollars. You know, I give him some tips. He's, they move him, they prepare for a work permit, move him. It's not, there are some people that if you, if you have the authority, it's not you that actually you have to do ITRs, you have to do this. Oh, no, 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 no. They will move you. There's some, there's some visa that don't need to go this protocol. There's when you have a confidence, when you have authority in your field, they move you. I remember there's a job I got. I do some consulting to some other, uh, like there's a company in, um, um, uh, what's it called? Japan, that they normally consult me for Africa. This There's one that called me then, like then I don't know my value. <laughs> I just want to ship this in. Then it's for U, uh, UN job. So they're looking for consultant in telecommunication that would do um, some maps and do the design within it. So when they contacted me through LinkedIn, and we started discussing, moved to the email, and I started talking, then I asked me, um, how much is my rate? 
And I, I look at them, I ask, I call some, some of my friends in the US, I said, no, you know, uh, $100 is a bigger big, a big money, you know, per hour, you know, 150 is very big money. And I said, okay, between 100 and 150. And I said, okay, my hourly rate is $120 per hour. The, the lady, after we immediately see me, call me on phone. He said, what do you say? I said, it's 120. But it's still negotiable, we can, we can negotiate it. <laughs> so she told me, I don't think you know your worth. UN, we don't pay less than $450 per month. The least we can pay. But if you work much, you work more than that, I will put you $500. Although the job didn't go through at the end of the day, but at least it gave me something. You know, she was able, fair enough to open up. She said, this is UN job. We're not talking, we're not, this is not South Africa. This is UN job, United Nations job. And this is how much you pay. So in that level, you're supposed to know. We, if you are going for, you know, outside in dollars, you're supposed to know, know this, but you have to be taking authority over it. So now I need to, for you to rebind yourself, there's some question you need to ask yourself now. Now I need to get this to this first question. And believe me, I think I'm, I'm trying to round up. The first question is, uh, decide in the area you want to know, which area do you want people to know you online? Like I said, it might not be your um, current area. You might change if you know that you are not doing well, you are struggling in this. But before you are changing, make sure, make sure that that, you know, you are really, really need to change. There's something you need to do that is better with what you are doing. Second one, create a profile to identify your interest in that area the area, any area, you know, make your profile, talk to that area. So that whenever I go to your profile, I don't need to be confused. When I, once I click on profile, I already know where you are, what you're doing and the area. Big praise signal me if my time is up. So try to post and share relevant things in that topic. Share, anybody that discuss thing, you like it, share it. When you share, write some piece of words, one or two, to explain more in what that person is saying, post it. Follow people in that area. First, okay, let me start again. First is decide what area you want people to know you, number one. Number two, create a profile that identify your interest in that area. Number three, try to post and share relevant things in that topic or in that area on LinkedIn. Number four, follow people in that area and start conversation with them through connecting on the stuff and you know, messages, trying to connect with them. Number five, consider to talk to talk, to talk on that area. Sometimes it might be um, 30 minutes or one hour video. Just come up, put it up. Talk about something, especially if something is going wrong in that area. Talk about it, discuss about it. Go to company profiles. Check what they're doing. Every company, like I said, no matter what you do, all the municipality here needs you. Look, look at this about the load shedding stuff. You know, they need help the field. You know, most people are not even paying electricity for electricity. That is the sense of some areas are not paying for electricity. You know, come up with a solution. As a finance person, as an account person, as an economist, plan, forecast, how will we make this part of country, part of region that is not paying? How will we be billing them? Once we can able to solve it, we're a millionaire now in South Africa. In the whole Africa, billing system is an issue. Billing system, both water, both electricity, no matter what, how we call it, billing issue, automatic billing issues is, is a problem. So if you can come up with a solution on how we can do this billing, you're a millionaire, I'm telling you. I went to Nigeria, I meet with the Cross River State government, sorry. And I, so when I met with them, so they are doing, uh, we're doing something on uh, River, Cross River State uh, uh, water board. And the whole system was mess. The system is one, 180, 183 megaliter per day. But they are working, they are working on that 30% capacity. Now the issue is that they have 45,000 clients. So the issue of the demand is more now than supply. They couldn't meet up. But then they don't even know, as I had their billing system, they normally send people to pay to the bank, some people will collect. No, the billing system was more, the, everything can work there. If you're into IT, they need all the sector. What I'm saying is, look at their skills. 
how, which area can we apply it to solve the problem in that particular area? If you get a company and see the problem they're having, even if everything is all right in that company, or look, let me tell you, I was uh, doing a research. We have about, I think, 286 municipalities in the whole South Africa. Out of that 260, only a 20, 20 municipalities created one. <laughs> all the other municipalities. Until you move there, you will see how there's a lot of problem in Africa. There's a lot of problem, Make keep on mentioning, there's a lot. The problem that we cannot, nobody can, the African problem is complex. You just look for a small portion that we are career, you are scared and so, so they walk into that area to solve it. And you make a lot, of, there's a lot of money. Who told you there's no money? I met with CEO, DBSA, and we're discussing. And he told me, he said, I have six billion. Six billion I want to return back to World Bank. Nobody is coming forward for it. I met with CEO for water research. And he told me, Sam, Mr. Frank, let me tell you the truth. Let me tell you the truth. Look, we are not accepting money again. People are ready to give us money, but nobody is coming to correct it. I met with African Development Bank. They, 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 they just give me the list of, he said, we can finance and fund any project, but nobody is coming. Afresh Bank, mention them. I have linked with almost all the Afri development banks that support projects. They are looking for you, people like you. And most of that is, I don't know why we are doing, we are busy in the classroom. I didn't say that writing a journal paper is bad, but what are you getting from that? What is that in solving? If you want to finish, oh, my paper is accepted, praise God, we'll drop it. What? and it will never be used again. But let me tell you, it will take you like two to three months or four months to provide one journal paper, to do feasibility study, to do ordinary feasibility study for a project that will take you just in, within three weeks to one month is 500,000 rand. Put me for that. And above, from and above, 500,000 rand. Within three weeks, what are you doing for the study? Just to do the same thing. What is the problem statement? You write the problem statement. You know, from problem statement, you started developing it. You know, give a gap analysis, you give a solution to it. You know, gap, uh, this is the gap we have, gap one, two, two. Then you give an option analysis for you to be able to solve this. This is option one, option two, option three. And this is technology, you know, from because I'm a consultant and recommending you use option A is the best option. This is a full stop. We will submit <laughs> and you that. I'm not, I'm not, see, I'm not, like I said, I'm not, a, I'm telling you what I'm doing. I'm not a motivational speaker to make you happy. No, I'm telling you within the Africa, they are looking for who to solve this problem. There's this um, campaign. I said that since last year with some guys in the Rwanda, some big guys in the Congo, we jammed together with today's champion, Africa for Africa. It's only Africa engineers. It's only Africa experts can solve the problem for Africa. No other person. Anybody that comes, they want to make money. And they don't care. They don't want Africa to be good. But we, we talked to ourselves and said, I want to be the part of this team. I want to make Africa great. I want to put my expatriate in Africa. There's money in Africa. Who will solve it? It's you. What they need, only to, that you are such skill, that you are expatriate, just put it down and start working on your area and see how you can penetrate. The only thing they need from you, just make us reduce the cost of operation. With this, we can see with your solution, we can reduce our cost of operation by 10%, that's all. With this, we can see, we can reduce our revenue by 10, even by 3%, they will look for you. Now, let me just rush so that I run up. I will start with the 10 Brother ways. Frank, can I ask something? Like while you then just interject, and thank you so much. I mean, I don't know how, how you prepared all these things in your head, but this has been so <laughs> this has been so rich for me. And while you are talking, a lot of things are going on in my mind concerning my own life, you know. <laughs> now, I just want to ask if you have questions so that we can begin to channel the questions. Brother Frank wants, he's a very practical man. That's why he's here. You know, and you can see that it's coming in on the power of the branding, the power of LinkedIn, 
um, you know, why you need to be an authority in your field. It's giving us practical concepts of money, how you need to negotiate and all that. If you have any question, now this meeting is really about being practical and thank God for our speaker. He's been extremely practical. Look, I can give you, you can lift up your hands. Um, as long as you can assure me you ask your question in one or two minutes, you know, so that it can talk to questions. But it, I personally am finding this very rich. So if no question comes up, Brother Frank, I will give it to you to continue because really for me, but let me ask you one question before you continue. You know, yeah. you mentioned, and I, I've seen that before, of somebody, because you know, a lot of people are in dilemma in this period. There are certain industries that have significantly suffered. For example, the hospitality industry has significantly suffered right now. And there are a lot of people that are trying to say, I want to transit from where I am to that place that I can transit into another field that you said, find your passion and all that. Now, number one, how do I get to that place of transition? Do you get my point? And how do I move? Because you gave an instance, and I've seen that a lot in, in my career, where you said you met someone in Botswana that is in the, is it, is it the energy field that energy. knows nothing and recruits about 20 engineers? I mean, people here are in various fields. The world, the top, the, 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 called the um, industrial revolution is here. The fourth industrial revolution is here. And you're saying everything is online right now. Sincerely, my brother, there are people that are here and they're saying, we've heard you, sir. We want to transit, help us transit. And I know you said a lot of things, but can you echo this transition here? Okay. Because okay. some sectors will never get back together. You know, the hospitality industry as it is, has to be rebranded if you are going to make money in that field. So that element is what I want you to talk to. Then the second question I would want you to also address is when you look into, I know it's a bit of making you a prophet now. When you look into the future, you've talked about the future of, um, you know, you've talked about the future of the, the IT space and how we need to get into the new order. When you look into the future of, Africa, especially in 2020, what sectors should we be playing in? Okay, I will, I will start with the last question then because the, the transition I'm talk, I mentioned for your first question, I will solve it now when I started pointing the marketplace because I'll have to use what is the marketplace and started pointing out how we can make transition, you know. But uh, the, uh, the second question, Wait a minute. The second question is about what? Sorry, I just get lost. The second question is about the future. Okay, the future. Let's okay, okay. The okay. next. Okay. Yeah. No, I get it. Somebody is trying to position for next year. What Let's are see. we? The the future about it is about every section. Every there's no particular one. All the sectors work. The only thing you know is that. Are you this question? Am I solving a problem? So, because I can say it, it must be in the IT, because it might get lost when you move to IT. It might be in the telecommunication, it might get lost. But in whatever you are doing, the question is, am I solving problem? How you know you are solving problems is that when you are talking with somebody, she will always in that field, you will see him nodding. Ah, I think you have you have some point now. Then, then you know you are solving problem. Then any problem you are solving within organization, within company, the first thing is that that problem must be what company is looking at. They want to reduce their cost. They want the uh, revenue to increase and then improve their performance. So once you have this key thing, because after you solve the problem now, you tell me about my problem, I know about my problem. But when you bring the solution, I say with this solution, you can able to have A, B, C. They were rushed. That's what they want to do. Every CEO want to get, you know, reduce the cost by all means. Because with what is going on now, they are reducing staff, they are going down, but the revenue is not increasing. The performance is, so how do I want? I, want, I have 10 staffs. I want to reduce, I want to reduce it for, to seven without affecting, then my cost will still be high. Operational cost will reduce. 
and I want then I want the performance to still be high. That is what all of them are looking at. And you were able to meet them and discuss and say, hey, I think I have the solution to this. You, you are passing through this and look at what I'm going to do. If I do A, B, C, D, we're able to arrive at this. They will jump at it, no matter how. Then there's something you mentioned again, I want to revert again about, it does not, see, you know how, just know how to connect dots. Know how to, what is the problem you are having? Okay, in this problem, we need electrical engineer, we need mechanical engineer, we need financial, we need expert, we need a legal team. What I need is just to connect all of them. <laughs> the first project I did with DBSM, that was last year. At the, at, the, at the heat of COVID-19, it started around um, uh, April, May. And then I, they needed a legal expert. They needed um, uh, somebody that had PPP experts. They needed uh, environmental experts. They needed um, uh, what a financial experts. So I don't have this four in my company. Only what we have is only the technical engineers. And I started looking for them. I searched. I make call, I call within a day, two or three days. I got all of them, I put them together. See, the job, it was even in energies, no, it wasn't my field, but I have my uh, energy director. I put all of them in the meeting and I, I started discussing the, the this. Look, we have this job and how do we go? First of all, how do we partner together? Say, so, okay, we have to go for, say, no, I don't want JV, can we partner as a one company? And I move all of them. I was able to convince all of them to go with me. In fact, the legal team, they won the best legal team 2020 in the whole South Africa in the PPP. The FAFA, as I was doing the meeting, before God of mine, the only thing I have, I was sitting in my, uh, in my, in my dining table. That's my office. Those people, those, or the legal team I call, they have very big office at something, very mighty office. They have employed like 50 people, legal person are working for, well, one in Delhi. Then the environmental guy I call has been into operation for a long time. And he has his office. All of, it's only me that the one that don't have office, but I was one that called them and put them under my company. I will submit, <laughs> you know. So the issue is not about what you study. The issue is about, you can convert whatever you study to project management. How can you bring everybody together? Then you need a network. And that's the main thing. How do we have this big network? That if you need an accountant today, you get it. You need a financial person, you get it. You need it. You put it a big team. And when we put our team, we started competing with a, a company like Oracon. We started competing with big enough, a big, big companies. Because what is a big company? It's not a that building. It's people that are in it. The resources they have that what make them big. And for you to be big, know how to connect resources and bring them together. You know, if you want to apply for them, then look at it. Don't go through it. 10 years experience, uh, professional engineer. Do you have it? No, look, where can I get it? Look, source for resources, get it, you put it here. Before you know it, you form a big company. Then sign a, just a, a little memorandum of understanding that all of you will submit together. When the jobs come, we'll divide it and share another. You know, so when you know that sometimes the legal team that I employ was charging me, the, the legal team, the lady was charging 3,000 rands per hour. I met another, the legal team, the person, I've not even, I have like three legal teams I'm working with. The other one, he just has four years experience. And the, I can send you, so ask him, send me a quotation, how much are you charging? He just graduated three, four, four years ago. And she's charging me <laughs> 3,500 per hour. Because when we sell this in tech, I know, Tom, I will show you people that are charging 5,000 rands per hour here. I know my work. In my company, no director charge below 2,000 rand per hour. You can't do that. It's from 2,000 and above. But then, remember, first of all, there's all this, remember, taking authority. No, um, prepare ourselves for opportunity. We have gone these things, all the other So now, how do we transit? First, the thing that you will not joke with, I keep on telling it about LinkedIn. If you're able to understand that LinkedIn very well, you will move fast. There's nobody I want to connect now that I don't connect. There's nobody I want to have meeting. In fact, I've stopped most of doing the write ups. There's no day I will not get, you know, other CEO trying to connect with me, you know, people looking for this, sending you connection, discussing this. In fact, all my 80% of my connection, my project I've worked on, money I've cashed out was during pain. And I will 
give you 10, 10 ways of how you can make good use of it. Of can you can pick whatever you need. As I'm going, I'll be explaining, I know my time is not. First of all, number one, type a skill that you have in, you have in mind. Type it, it as a this go, go, but, you know, for example, now what we have is psychology. I don't know what to do with your psychology. I want to move to psychology, I've not done it before. Go to LinkedIn, just type psychology in the search bar. It will bring it out a list of all psychologists, what they're doing. You said, don't, don't take your time. Clicking on their profile and say, looking at what are these guys doing? Because when there, you now see people that have a um, uh, senior consultant, independent research, this, and they put down their skills. So if it's what, because before you go through all of them, you might, when you type psychology, you can see maybe 50 or 80 or 100 of them. You know exactly the area that you want, you want to focus. You, you, you like minds, so they're looking at their, those like minds. You click on them and look their profile and ask yourself, what and what I don't have here. You can make, easy, easy way to do it. You can just have gone to your profile, just a little status message and is overwhelming. I think I would like to have a chat with you. I want you to be my mentor. I want to move to this area. They all, there's no place, you know, that's how I started 2015, 2014, that's how I started in LinkedIn. I always give you that I want to meet with you. And when you meet, I'd never, never, okay, still there, never ask anybody for, please employ me. No, they will run. Don't send your CV. Never send your CV to somebody in LinkedIn, except the person asked for it. But offer to meet, offer him the mentorship. I want you to mentor me in this area. I've gone through your profile. How do we achieve this? I saw this. You just thinking, you'll be changing them. I've seen this thing. How do you how do you manage to get this? At this what age? I want this. Where do you get this degree? How do I manage? I see this um, uh, training. How do we get it? Is it? Is this a gradual process? And you see them, you know, replying, no, whether white or black. So open it. Whether the person is Africa, outside Africa, in the US, just be discussing. There's the online, just offer him for online meeting. You can use Google Meet. Google Meet is free. You can use a, uh, a Zoom, Zoom for 40 minutes, 40, 40, 45 minutes, free to just organize the online meetings. Please send me an email. I just want to send you. I got that a lot, a lot. People that ask you, I want to know how, how do you get this? How do you get that? Can we connect? You connect. Sometimes, you know, it's, it, if you're happy when somebody say you want to learn from you, I've seen it, you have to praise the person a bit. So we to get his attention. Second one. Go to your dream company. How do I transit? Which company is doing? Go to your dream company. Go to their LinkedIn profile. Look, once you look to the workers, you see what they tell the workers, you know, or uh, people that work in that company. Click on it. It will give you the list of all of them. Check. There are some people that always update their profile in that company. Link. You know, we, and because connect as much people as, you know, connect more of the directors the managers in that company, maybe few, a few of your level. Because when you post about that, about because that's your target market, you are targeting that company. You know, maybe um, let's assume in, I'm doing uh, in energy, I'm targeting an, all the energy company. I said, I'm there. because I want them to read my post when I post it. When I started my discussion, if they are my friends, they will read it. Don't worry, some of them will not reject, some of them will just be adding, keep on adding. LinkedIn, LinkedIn, I think they give you about 30 or 40 people a week. Make use of it. Make sure you add 30 or 40 people within your field. And you see what, if God wants to become your friend, you see what they post, you post. When you started writing, it's due to your people of interest. They will be reading it. Because if you started posting with that, you don't have any network. You are posting to all your PhD friends or your master's friends. Man, they don't have any contribution in what they're doing. They're not solving their problem. Neither they're they solving your own. So you need to target people you want to solve their problem. All the ministers in South Africa, African countries, they're all in LinkedIn. Connect them. You want to go to mine, connect the minister of mine. <laughs> I think uh, last, this last week or last week, I connected, I connected with the minister of um, uh, communication. She was doing something on Huawei. I immediately, I, um, I, I sent him email. She replied the next day, oh, Frank, uh, I said, okay, the next thing is meeting. I know, I will meet him by maybe before this year, runs out of by first, uh, next year, next year. And it's easy. Governors, the idea. Most of them have give people to reply to them, but then request, they will get it. Demand for their email. Send, post something. Number three, I say go to your dream company. Look at it. Um, number three, 
post something on LinkedIn often. Post something as you can in your field. I don't know what to post. I'm new in that area. Research, read. Just one or two or three, four lines. Okay, is it my area? I say, pick up your PhD thesis. Pick up your master thesis. Look at your advice. Read it before you, you will see what is the problem statement you're trying to solve. Pick something on promise of how do we solve it? You know, you know, just pick. Even what somebody has written, you can find it again. Post. Create an idea. Make it a point of duty. Saturday, Sunday, be thinking on what you're going to post on Monday. By 9 10, post it. You know, like, okay, number four, I said, don't stop posting. When you don't stop posting, when, when, when I mean by don't stop posting, the first post, you might not get anything. You might just, that when I started then, I would, I would tip my brothers. I said, please just go and like what I post now. <laughs> you, know, you can tip somebody, say, please, just let's get, let me get one like. Uh, they will like, you know, sometimes I will post again. I will engage on argument, not, uh, not engage yes on uh, in uh, something somebody posts, I engage on it. I started working and discussing, you know, but before I discuss, I write, I have to go and read because I know there, is a, there will be a professor here, there will be somebody that will take me. You have to read, you have to post, you have to reply. That is your new store. That is your new store. If you have skills, if it's not an academic, I want to touch the other. Please go to Instagram, go to Facebook, go to this, post whatever you are doing. Even if it's, you are a promba, whatever you are doing, you are performing work, just take a small video, one hour with your phone, post it. Let people see what you are doing. Connect with big, big fans, you know, add followers, follow people, they will follow you. No matter how small it is, make sure you put just more video. You're trying to do so, uh, this is a problem work. We're trying to pay this. Just small thing you have to say, post it. Don't do any work without posting it. Increase whatever. Whenever you started having people connecting from you from Instagram, please, I'm looking for somebody to help me to do this. Whenever you started getting that, you know you are good. Because then, because once person will call, you know you are valid. You can now go to, for me to do this is 500 per hour. Are you ready? I'm going to spend four hours. It's 2,000. This is professional. And you don't need to explain to you, to the person you are professional. He has seen what you are posting. He knows you are professional. And he's coming to you as a professional. Dress well, put on your uniform, look good when you're posting it. Don't post, I don't, use a good, nice, good camera. Just one minute video is okay. And make sure you're doing it daily. Oh, sorry, weekly, weekly update. Any social media, you are update. Let people see you. Then the, okay, the uh, fourth one is nonstop. The fifth one is check the group list. You are in the, uh, LinkedIn. Is you know big group list in the group. Click on the group. Look at people in that group. Check their profile because there, there are something that will make you to join a group. It's either it's related to you. It's either you want to be in that field. That's why you join the group. Those people that are in that group, they are also doing great. Look at their profile. Check with them. Connect with them. So it's not only in the group. You also connect with them. So you can able to increase your pace. The, um, okay, I've seen it. Russia, number three, Russia, anything that somebody posted that you're interested, even though they are not interested, trying to, you know, criticize this a bit, not to say the person don't know what he's saying, but add your own. There should be an input when you share something. And people will read that it, it. You started getting notice. You started getting notice. You know, there's about three people. That, there's one professor on the visit. I always woke up to see, you know, whatever he posts. Um, because the person I know because it's very interesting. I know that you can still be that. Now I don't I don't leave him post a, a lot. I have some marketing guys that you know help us to post, but in other I still go to I still check, I still connect with people every day. You know. Connect, connect with the people. Number six, connect number seven, sorry, connect with the people that it makes sense to connect with and tell them, tell them why. Sometimes you might need to connect, they ask you to. So, you know, something might pop up, just to send email. Please don't connect, ask, ask some, I'm just, why you want to connect? Like I mentioned before, you can say you're a mentor, so I've gone to the profile. So when you want to ask more email attached to it, when you want to connect, I'm, I'm rounding up, please. The last one is get the best profile picture. Don't use, is a, is a professional picture. Please don't use any look, see, to take a, to get a picture, a very nice profile picture. Picture, I think, I think it's less than 100 or highest 150. Please snap one, dress well, 
if they are going to do photo uh, photo shoot, photo shoot to dress, to you to look good, look the best of you, make sure you put it there so that when somebody click can see your face, no, this is the man, because you can't say you are consultant, senior consultant, and when they're looking at you, say no, 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 this one, this one does not worth it. So you have to look good, dress, look smart, put some smile in that. Number nine, there's also this in the use um, use free one month LinkedIn premium. That and it does not cost anything. Sometimes you click on it, you don't know, because it also tell you a lot. You can get, uh, there's a lot of advantage with it. So the only thing is that I'm not expecting you to be paying for it. They have one month free. One month free, if you cannot, no, you cannot afford, they cancel it because if they give you free, but you have to register with your card. But make sure that, you know, whenever it want to continue to the next month, if you know you cannot pay, cancel it. And wait maybe another two months again, and do one month free again then cancel, do one month for again. Until when you suddenly have, if you have money for it, pay, it helps. But if you don't have money, just use it for a start and see how it goes. They will ask you for your card details, put it on. After one month, if you couldn't pay, you cancel. If you could pay, please continue. Then the last one, number 10, please view your network. Make sure that you use, like I said, 30 to 40 people a week. Make sure you use it every week. Make sure that your followers are please. I think I'm on 1,007 or so. But I know that some ladies I know in uh, one of my friends is a lecturer. He has 42,000 followers. Once you click anything, you move like speed of light. <laughs> so build your network. Give yourself from now to next six months target. At least in next six months, you needed to have at least 5,000 to 8,000 8, followers in the LinkedIn. So that when you write, a lot of people say, you know. So at this point, so that will help you if you can able to use this. This is what you want to transit from A to B. Search for people in that field. Look for that people in that field. Start reading there. Start researching on there. Start writing on it. You know, your first item might not make sense, but continue. Don't lose up. Don't continue. Before you know it, you will pick it up. Talk one minute, five minutes. Just say something. Post it. I think at this point I will stop and. Uh, Take some thank you so so much brother frank thank you so much this has been a, a very very rich session um and i think we all if you've been if you've had this as an informative um, session can we just you know as a mark of cut if we're in the auditorium we'll probably stand up to give you a rounding applause but let's just say thank you to um dr frank this has been a very very rich session um before we close, um, um, before I wrap up, I just want to find out for the last time, does anybody have a question? Um, does anybody ask a, have a question? I think one thing that um, stands out to me here is the fact that um, you cannot afford, let me use the word, um, to say that I'm a shy person. You know, you cannot afford to not be a visible person that we are in a world where invisibility is essential and you must be deliberate about being visible. You know, I think for us as professionals, and you've also made it clear that if you are talking about somebody that has education, then your best bet is LinkedIn. Um, if you are somebody that you are selling a trading, I mean, a skill like a plumber, like you said, hairdresser, make sure you're on Instagram. So, it's interesting because what I hear is that the social media platform, we can even take advantage of it rather than waste our time on it, you know, um, because with Instagram, it, interestingly, you know, I do a bit of some products and I found out that you have more sales when you actually put your product on Instagram today than, you know, than even trying to knock on certain doors. There are people that would even buy your product on Instagram. So I think this has been quite an insightful, uh, uh, an insightful teaching. In the absence of, um, in the absence of no question, um, I just want to say to you, um, Doc. Um, okay, Belkram, please, can you can you touch on forty new business ideas that will shake the world in the next coming years? I'm sure you won't be able to talk about 40, um, but um, can you give us five good ideas that you think can shake the world in the next, that will shake the world in the next, um, in the next um, five years, Doc? 
Okay, okay. Um, I will start. I will start from from what, what I do. You know, the first thing I started checking is uh, when I finish my uh, PhD, I have my families in uh, US and Canada, and everybody is trying to turn me to come over to Canada, and uh, I have everything it takes to to move to relocate. Uh, even US, and I started applying these I thirty forms, you know, to to relocate. But on a second thought, when I was in at Malaysia, that's something that happened. So I always come. Uh, uh, my classmates they used to tease me, like if they want to refer. Hey, um, I was the uh, opportunity. I was the only the Africa African guy in the class. So if they want to refer to Africa, they will bring one small girl in those being drinking one dirty water. Say, hey, Frank, this is Africa. You know, and likewise, it's trying to tell me, hey, Frank, this is where you belong. <laughs> this is Africa. So whenever, if you are, if you travel out, out of Africa, whenever they refer to Africa, they refer as very poor, insane. you know, there's a lot of things that show me. So I told my, my, my siblings, look, I don't want to come over to the US for people to start referring back again. I think I need to solve the problem in Africa. Is then I now sitting down and said, which problem can I solve within Africa? Then we started looking at water. Look, let me share something about water. So take that place very well. South Africa will be 17% deficient of water by 2030. If you go to Australia now, Australia company, Australia as a town, they don't have water. Bottle of uh, 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 a bottle of water is more expensive than a bottle of beer. The same thing is, I don't know whether you have stopped by in Dubai to buy a water. You'll be, you'll practice something else to buy water in the Dubai. So now in the next few years, now let me give you an example. Last two decades is all about oil. If you have the oil, you rule the world. Now it's no longer oil. Crude oil, everybody's looking at it. Now, in this, this recent dispension, what they are dragging is data. The problem, the fight between America and China is who control the data. That's all they're looking about 5G. So whoever that has the data has the world. But now, in the next two, in the next 20 years coming, it will be who control the water. Water is life. And if everything go automated, if I switch up water, because now what we are seeing is that how do we control metering and everything using my phone? So I can look at a country like uh, Kwazunata. I said, Kwazunata, I think you guys are not paying me. I switched it off. They will not have water. And all of them will be crying, started looking for you. So whoever that control the water, you know, water, and there's a lot of things to do in that water space. You know, I've mentioned IT. I've mentioned um, um, energy. Look, the, how bad it is in energy is that seventy percent of people in Africa don't have access to electricity. In IT, seventy eight percent in Africa don't have access. To, that you are in South Africa, you have access to internet. You don't know what others are facing. Seventy eight percent in Africa don't have access. Fifty percent of world population don't have access to internet. Fifty percent of world population. The 78 out of that 50 is from Africa. They don't have access to internet connection. The next one that's moving is about agriculture in every sector. I keep on mentioning it. The first thing I started before, I didn't start with, I started first of all with agriculture to solve the problem in Africa. I started with agriculture. That was 2017. I, then I don't even know, like, when you mean, like the equation you have to transit from one place to the other. I went to land bank, land bank. There's the one of them. I made them empty. I said I was looking for a loan because I look at. It, I said the only problem in South Africa, what they eat in South Africa is pap, which is maize. And there will be water deficiency. You know, by by that twenty thirty, it will be difficult. You know, so I said I want to see in Nigeria and West Africa. We have a lot of water, even in some part of the city. We have a lot of water. So give me a loan. I want to get 100 acres and cultivate maize and you know, be transporting it to South Africa. So I discussed with him then you know, after, because even 
Then I didn't do my study very well. I was just a new, but I was eager, you know. And I met him in LinkedIn. I started connecting with him in LinkedIn and he invited me to the office for presentation. You know, one connection, when I went for presentation, I <laughs> I didn't even work with my laptop. I the the my uh, my uh, um presentation note, I printed it and shared them in the this as I started presenting. You know, but the issue why I stopped with that because that I didn't get an expert that would take, I said, okay, let me manage with what I have. But I've mentioned, look at this field, that field, this field, this four field I mentioned now is vast. It's not what one person can do. Then I can mention about you about PPP. It's a new place that is coming to Africa very quick. Private public, is it public private partnership? It's moving. If you're a legal person, but my PPP uh, lawyer, that's that, that's I'm telling you, collecting three thousand five hundred per hour now. The only one that knows it. If you're into Lega and you know it, you move very fast. If you are even in, an engineer, please know your PPP very well. There's another thing say, I'm looking at it again is that, look, the issue that everybody will tell you that there's no money in Africa. Yes, there's no money. But if you are due to study where there's money. So now trying to get money, with finance, funding, and so any solution, whether engineering solution, environmental solution, any solution you can bring it together, you will excel. Having the skills is not enough. Looking for people to fund their skill, then you move in Africa. I've mentioned some earlier, you know, but remember, I've mentioned before, any area that you are interested in, there's an opportunity for you in African soil. Mention any area, I will tell you where there's opportunity. Any area, any field, psychology, this, any area, I will tell you where there's where it is in Dr. Africa. Dr. Frank, thank you so, so much. I, I think agriculture, um, you've talked about IT, you've talked about telecommunication, you've talked about energy. Um, you know, I also believe that logistics is also a, a, a mm. field that cannot be ignored in the, you know, connecting goods from where they are to where they need to be. I mean, you need to go to a lot of African countries and you'll be shocked how terrible um, the road network is. So logistics is definitely tipped as one of the costs of, I mean, one of the money spinner for the now. So that's why the likes of um, Jack Bezos of Amazon made some incredible money, you know, um, because of logistics during the COVID-19 period. So logistics and Africa has not yet solved the problem of logistics. So these are opportunities for, um, for the future. Look, guys, we can get um, Dr. Frank talking over and over again because he knows his subject and he's been a blessing and I think he's been very practical. But let me tell you something. This has been a Christian platform. Behind it all, if this man is also going to tell you the things that he does spiritually in order to be able to achieve this, I believe that's another one that may have, <laughs> one that, that's probably another, a longer time than the, the one that he has spent here. Now, because don't miss it, there is the God factor in all that we do. And I think many of us already have this advantage of the God factor. And what we really need, you know, is to now become more practical, you know, in the things that we do. Can you follow, um, can you follow on social media, Dr. Fran? Yeah, the men will, I'm sure we would all love to follow him. Yes, you can follow him. Um, I, I, look, a person like him is probably not on, you might not be following him on Facebook. So if I were you, you've got his full name, Dr. Frank Ibramalo. I would go over there and follow him on, um, what do you call it, on LinkedIn. Um, if you follow him on LinkedIn, you can be able to do all that he has taught us on LinkedIn. Look, I'm privileged to work in the marketplace and also be a pastor. I think at the end of the day, there is a place of God's inspiration that makes all these things to happen.